too. All right, guys, let's see how I'm going to invite Manny. Um, okay, so go to your live, honey. I am. And I think you have to go, you have to go watch mine. Hang on. Okay. Yeah, go to mine. Where am I? Go to mine. Oh, send a request to be in Mayla's. Yep, there you go. That's it. Send request. Okay. Manny. Okay, this worked. Oh, How do I do? Waiting for Manny. Accept. There you go. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, wait, it's an echo. Oh, okay. We're too close to each other. All right. You're going to have to move. Hey, guys. Stay with us. We're trying to figure this out. Oh, wait, it looks. Does it? No. Where's the first one? Because we're too close. So we're actually sitting with each other. I can look to the master. I know. You're going to have to be shackled sitting with you. No, I don't need mine, do I? Yeah, because it's only your phone. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys, bear with us. That's why we started early. Okay, how about if I go on this side of the office? Yeah, no, it's good. No. Yeah, you have to be the other one. Okay. Sorry. I guess I'll give you guys a tour of my house. Okay. All right. See ya. This is why you start things early in a planner. I knew this was going to happen. So I said, let me go a little early so we avoid any technical difficulties. Anyways, this is my quarantine. I'm going to be drinking and having fun. All right. Honey, <laughs> you're showing the home. What? <laughs> it's okay. There's nothing bad here. Hold on. Let me move all this stuff out of the way. How was that? That's amazing. Really? Perfect. Okay, go close the door so I don't get echo. Miss you, Actually, maybe you don't need to close it. No? Oh, let me just drop it. Oh. Okay, hang on. Okay, how is the sound quality now? I can hear you. Can you guys hear us? Yeah? Let I can see. hear you. You can? Let me see. Let me turn. Get some light. Let's get hey, it dark how now. How come you look better than me? Oh, wow. Because you're just naturally gorgeous, baby. You don't oh, oh, thank you. There we go. Okay, perfect. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first live. First of all, can you hear us? Hey, your sound echoes so much, but that's because you're... Really? But can they hear the echo or no? No, I think it's fine. Yeah? Okay. All right. Well, we're, we have a minute. Let me just check some stuff. Okay. Hope you guys are all safe and sound and keeping your sanity. It's definitely challenging times. Wait, I gotta it turn it up. I don't hear you very well, babe. Okay, can you talk? Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Oh yeah, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Um, so we're gonna try to speak both in Farsi and English. Um, because obviously we posted a video in both languages and we know that we have, you know, fans from all around the world, followers from all around the world. So, Salam Dustan, Mandela Hassan, Shohara Manchir, and Emruz Baratun Life, Darim, Angel Midim K, Shizibut K, Khedim Kassim for a long time. Bokhanim Baratun, finally, Manu Manchir Boham, that one is Yod Hassim, so Vakh Darim K, in Kara Baratun Anjom Bidim. So, all right, so t to tell you guys a little bit about us, these are all the questions, by the way, that I printed out. Um, Manny and I, I think like the most common question people always ask us is how did we meet? Um, Manny and I met 11 years ago. Like to this day, I still cannot believe that we've been together for 11 years. We met 11 years ago on Facebook. Yes, on Facebook. <laughs> um, it was love at first poke. <laughs> We always joke. He reached out to me, for the record, um, 
and um, we just started talking. Um, really, I think like his approach was so genuine, and he he wasn't trying to hit on me, or he wasn't he didn't have any creepy vibes like most people online do. Um, <laughs> so that's what won me over initially. But um, I think it was obviously so many other things, but our both joint shared love of cars, which um, we still do, although we don't get to drive any of the cars as much anymore because we have kids. But, um, you know, those are the things that really attracted me to Manny. And we started talking about cars. And then after a month of talking solely on Facebook, we started, we met each other um, in person in Orange County. I lived in LA, he lived in Orange County. And it was instant, like, you know, when they say, well, you know, you know, it was instant connection, instant chemistry, and um, we've been together since. <laughs> Why don't you say your side? <laughs> how do you remember oh. it, babe? Uh, you know how it is. You know, I found a beautiful Persian girl, the only Persian girl on the TV show Deal or No Deal. So I used to watch <laughs> you and I told myself, hey, I'm going to put it on my vision board. And, uh, but no, uh, what I uh, was attracted to you, obviously, because you're an entrepreneur. You're not just a pretty girl and you're business minded and that's rare to find. And we share a lot of uh, common goals. You know, you're a family person as I am. And, um, you know, we headed off and I think we were business partners before we were lovers though. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we were. Right? Yeah, we were business partners. I invested in some of Manny's commercial properties in the beginning and yeah, I mean, we were business partners first before we were husband and wife. So, um, you know, they say marry your best friend. In this case, we marry your partner. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so, you know, that, you know, we want to go through all your questions. First and foremost, we want to just thank you all Sorry. for following us. And, you know, throughout the years, all the support and love and the kindness that you've shown us. I mean, there's so many people out there that you've never met, but yet give you such great energy and love and kindness that um, it's really a beautiful thing. And right now we're obviously all quarantined and, you know, we're navigating through these uncertain times and it's scary. Um, you know, Manny and I are both going to talk about some of the questions you guys asked and in regards to just this whole pandemic and what's, what our future is going to look like. But um, I think more than ever right now is the time that we are all coming together and it's really beautiful because for the first time in the world, we are all one. We are all in the same boat. Nobody is better than anybody else. Nobody, you know, we're all in this together. And the only way we're going to get out of it is by doing our part and um, mitigating this and staying home. And um, hopefully we're going to get out of quarantine soon. I don't know. Yeah. You, you, you talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I want to see, I don't see my feed anymore. Can you, you see I'm, I'm on? Yeah. Yeah, I okay. see you. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Do you guys see both Manny and I? Give a thumbs up if you see both Manny and I on your on your screen right now. Manny, give us some advice. Do you guys hear us good? Can you guys hear us right now and see us? I mean, I'm hearing you. Yep, there's a thumbs up. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Okay, good. Okay, good. Well, no doubt, you know, life. Uh... Are you okay? Sorry, well, I don't know what I was doing. Okay. Oh, I like this filter better. Okay, I'm gonna keep this filter, guys. I look very bronzy. I like this. Okay, it's my turn. Okay, Can I yeah. talk? Well, no doubt, you know, life always uh, challenges you, and this time it's globally. We're all being challenged, and uh, you know, it puts life in perspective. And you know, family is first. And now that you're stuck in the house with your family and kids, you get to learn a lot of. Uh, a lot about yourself, your limits, and what's important in life. So it's a nice reset, you know, to be honest, actually, it's, uh, you know, you have to look at things always as a positive angle, you know, and I think a lot of people are going to come out of this with better relationships, hopefully. And some, unfortunately, it's going to put too much a strain and, you know, God forbid they get divorced, but uh, you have to, you know, it's work, you know, it's challenge is always makes you, you know, grow in life. And um, I'm looking at it as a positive thing. I know it's, you know, sad. A lot of people are, you know, sick and a lot of people, uh, you know, died from this disease. And just want to thank all the people in the front line of medical, you know, the nurses, doctors, um, 
really my heart goes out to them because I know they're working towards everyone. Work I mean, everyone. Work. I mean, there's so many people that we rely on, and it's because of their service that we're able to stay home and still operate and and still be able to eat and have you know some sort of um, some sense of normalcy. I mean, from our shipping carriers to our banks, um, the bankers, um, drivers. I mean. Everyone, there's so many people that are out there doing the hard work, so that and risking have... their lives, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but thank you to to truly everyone that's risking their lives every single day to to just help with this pandemic. Um, you guys are the true heroes, and it doesn't go unnoticed. And we we owe you, we owe you our, our lives. All right. So do you want to go first with your list of questions? Yes. So okay. I posted on my feed um, the video, and I asked you guys to send me your, some some of your questions. So, Adam, I'm so not sure what you have on but there's so many. There was like so many questions between me and Yanni's account. So, we chose the ones that were the most commonly asked questions. Um, so, without further ado, let's do it. So, this one is from my girl Lily, um, and she asked. What are some of your tips on having a healthy, supportive marriage or a relationship? Um, being supportive of one another's dreams, helping your partner achieve their goals, even if it may not be a dream of theirs. Um, you guys seem to be really supportive of one another and everything that you do. So, this is a really common question that we get asked. You know, for me, I think um, in order for my partner to be able to make me happy, he needs to be happy. Um, he needs to be fulfilled. He needs to feel loved and supported and appreciated. And the only way that he can give me those things in return is if he feels that from me, giving it to him. And energy um, is so easily transferred. And um, for me, at the end of the day, he's my husband. I made a vow to be with him. I always knew I'm going to marry once, and it's going to be for life. Mm -hmm. I obviously love my husband, and I want to. Be oh, I love you too. For the long haul, and. First of all, no marriage, no relationship is perfect, and unfortunately, with social media, you're led to believe that people are perfect, and it's just absolutely not true. We have our share, fair share of disagreements and and what have you, but at the end of the day, we know that we want this to work, and we want to be together forever, and we love our family, and we love our kids, and so anything that comes our way, we try to work at it together. It may not happen right away. One big tip I will give you guys: it's Complete BS when they say don't go to bed angry. I 100% disagree with that. If I can give you one marriage tip, is to freaking go to bed angry. If you are just having a terrible day, a terrible fight, a terrible disagreement, you're not seeing eye to eye. You need to sleep the f that night. So you need to cool up the next day with yeah. a fresh set of perspective, rested, and maybe you'll see things differently. And that has 100% worked for us. I 100% agree. Don't think you need to. You should go to bed angry. You absolutely should because then the next day you might be a completely different person and you might regret some of the things you were gonna say to the to your partner the night before. So yeah. that's my tip. Right or you may be over what was bothering you. You know. Exactly. You yeah. know. Like sometimes they say sleep on it. That's why they say sleep on it because if you sleep on it, you might think differently the next day. But as far exactly. as support goes, honey, do you want to continue answering that question? How do we support one another? Um, mm -hmm. Well, you know, you have your businesses. I have mine. We have to be respectful of each other's goals and be supportive. Um, you know, no doubt there is pressure all the time. You know, with having two kids and trying to balance, you know, between business and life and family is probably the most challenging, you know, uh, thing for any couple, right? That have their own businesses. Yeah. So, just you got to be mindful and be able to. Compromise. Compromise is the most important, you know, key factor, you know, for a successful marriage. So, yeah. And it takes time, you know, and a lot of times you have to give where you don't want to give, but you have to realize you love that person and that's more important to them than what you're trying to do. So, yeah. a lot of give and take. And, you know, we have shared interests. Like at the end of the day, we have a lot of things in common and that's why we're together and it works. But there are things that he does that I may not be a fan of. And as long as he is not hurting me or taking something away from our family, then that's fine. That's, that's his thing. And he needs to have that freedom to um, do it and pursue it. Um, but again, you know, we're very like-minded. Like 
the two of us, we want to be with each other more than anyone else. So we would never dream of vacationing without one another or even going out. Like, first of all, we don't go to nightclubs, but if we did, like go out partying without each other. Like we, yeah. we want to be with each other. So um, that's the other thing. I think, you know, you really have to choose your partner carefully. And once you do, treat them just so lovingly, you know, from the beginning, be very careful with who you pick, you know, choose, you know, with your mind and, and heart. But once you've made that decision and you, you realize this is the one, do everything in your power to keep them and make them happy and nurture um, that, that relationship. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you wanna go with your next question? Yeah, so this is from Garage Goals Official, my buddy. He's, uh, what's been on your mind lately? A lot, everything. Um, you know, there's COVID-19 really threw a monkey wrench in your whole routine, your business plans, your travel plans, vacationing, your schooling for your kids. So, you know, when something like this happens, it, you really get a reality check. You obviously, you know, health is the most important priority. You know, you wanna make sure, you know, you, you know you're healthy, you exercise more nutrition wise, you know, get, enough sleep which i don't get enough sleep you know i don't either honestly but, that's one thing yeah. we wish we had more of we don't get enough sleep. yeah and then safety um it's obviously on my mind you know what happens if you have a total unrest and you know people do crazy things when they're desperate so you know i'm sure a lot of people uh, have uh, the same mindset if you look at the gun stores the lines going around the corners everyone that's what's um, been the scariest yeah yeah so, you know, that and then financial security, of course, I'm a landlord. So you guys can imagine I have a lot of tenants that want to work out, you know, a new rent program uh, on their leases. And I've been working, you know, probably harder now the past three weeks than the entire last year working with my tenants. But it's given. Uh, we're all in the same boat, like Leila said. So I'm working on those. But those are the top three, you know, health, safety, financial security. And I think that's with any family, right? And uh, you just got to do the best you can. So you'll go take the next question, honey. Well, do you want to know Farsi? Farsi? There's a lot of people that are saying Farsi. Bagu. So there, we have a lot of Farsi-speaking Iranian followers. And so they're asking us for translation. So My Farsi is not so good. Kind of, I can't. <laughs> we don't want to make this a super long live because nobody likes yeah. that. But Mikhail um, Farsi, Begu. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, مثلا مثل همه کسایی که تو دنیا الان بینا تو خونه نشستن به زور و نمیتونن برن بیرون خب یکی سلامتی بعدش هم بعد سلامتی سیفتی چی میشه به فارسی نمیدونم سیفتی 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 My, my friend, um, safety. I don't know. Okay, so anyways, uh, safety. But, uh, uh, so, you know, I think that the people who are in the world are very negative. So, you know, I think that the people who are in the world are very negative. Amon, Amon. Amon. Amon is okay. safety. Amon, Amon. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, this is from It's Layla on Instagram. She said, can you name a hardship you encountered in your life and how you overcame it? So I think what something that you and I share together is just having children and raising children. I think that's been one of our biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of couples can relate to that. Um, I personally went through really a hard period when I was trying to conceive my second um, baby and so um, and so it was a really difficult um, period for me I was very emotional I actually suffered um, a miscarriage in that period and you know it took a toll on, on me my emotional state my mental state and even my relationship I think you know overall I think just raising happy healthy thriving children is been the most challenging thing for us and we're always looking at, you know, people that we admire and look up to for guidance. And um, so that to me was, was pretty challenging and it still is. But I think if you're a good parent, it's going to be challenging because you're always wanting to be better and do more for your kids. Farsi, I want to make a 
<تصفيق> اوکی سو سوالی بود که توی زندگیت ام یکی موقعی که خیلی سخت بود برات چه موقعی بود تو زندگی و برای من وقتی که میخواستم حامله بشم با بچه دومم خیلی سخت بود برام به خاطر اینکه خب سخت بود نمیشد و خیلی ما سعی میکردیم و نمیشد و یک دونه میسکرش که اصلا نمیدونم به فارسی چی میشه یک دونه میسکرش داشتم و بعد از اون خیلی برام سخت بود که بچه دوم بیارم و خدا رو شکر شد و یو نو اوورال بچه داشتن و به دنیا آوردن و مراقبت کردن از از بچه خیلی چیزیه که سخته و باید خیلی یو نو قوی باشی و هی روش کار کنی Okay, I think that was a good translation. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, next question on my list uh, from a fan is, what is the secret of staying happy? Money and a status can keep you happy temporarily, but how do you keep it up long term? That's well, a good one. Yeah, well, that's a challenge I think everybody on the planet has, right? Yeah. Um, even I have it, you have it, you know, finding happiness, you're always in search of happiness. And as you grow, your hormones change, your priorities change. Sometimes you lose, you have to give up some of your freedom when you have kids. So it's not always up to you. You're not always in control. So there's always a challenge finding that happiness, what's important. But obviously, you know, when you're in a marriage, you have to look at, uh, you know, what makes both of you happy and yeah. also what makes you happy. So if you yeah. can't be happy, you can't make the other person happy. You have to know what makes you happy. I think that's step number one. You gotta know yeah. what makes you happy. A lot of people yeah. are searching for what they think is gonna make them happy, but you gotta know what makes you happy. But بدونی چی با من خوشحالت میکنه. اگه بدونی این اولین ستپه که کمک کنی که خوشحال باشی تو زندگیت. درست. Um, for me, I think happiness means um, having a loving, um, supportive husband, um, having my family near, Um, those are the main things. And then being fulfilled in my career, in, in what I do. Um, I'm the kind of person, obviously I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a mom, but I could never picture myself doing just one. Like I have to, I'm, I'm a multitasker, I wear many different hats. I've had multiple businesses throughout my life. And for me, it's always been the, having that balance because I know I can be that much more of a better wife and mom if I'm feeling fulfilled as a person, as a woman first. And to me, my career gives me that, my, my businesses give me that, and I can then bring that happiness and that confidence um, into my marriage. And you know, that's what, the, as Manny said, that's what attracted him to me, being mm-hmm. an entrepreneur, and what attracted me to him was the fact that he's so driven, so smart, Um, he's a man of his words. I mean, those are, I'm going to embarrass you now. <laughs> These are the things that I love about my husband. If you guys oh. know. This is actually one of the questions. They said, what was the first thing that attracted you to your husband? So number one, I mean, it was the fact that he just seems so genuine. Um, even from the get-go. I mean, let's be real. Back then when I was on Facebook, I was on Deal or No Deal. A pretty big show, you know, I was an actress, model, I had, you know, I was a TV personality, people knew me, I lived in LA, I go to events all the time, um, and so I would get hit up all the time by dudes on Facebook, people would slip into your, I don't know what they called it back then, your messages, and um, for some reason his stood out to me because he was so genuine and he didn't have creepy vibes, he wasn't throwing his wealth or anything like at me um but what i think what we what i connected with was the fact that he was just so genuine and then during one of our phone calls throughout the month that we were talking before we met um i called him it was a sunday i called him and i was like hey what are you doing and he's like oh nothing i'm just in the backyard with my family we're sitting on the grass and we're painting i was like what you're painting it's like <laughs> bs let me see that We didn't have FaceTime back then, so he sent me a picture, and they were all sitting, they had a blanket thrown on the grass, and they were all painting, like this whole family, his mom, dad, sisters. It was the sweetest thing, and I thought, look at this guy, he's single, you know, he could be hungover right now on a Sunday, like whatever, sitting in his backyard, but instead he's doing something with his family, and so knowing that he's a family man, that's what, like, solidified the deal for me. I was like, this is, this is, you know, a keeper. Yeah. Oh. Merci. Thank you, Ani. 
Now so, give me a heart. So next question um, is how long it took you to get to where you are and what affirmations, visualizations, and techniques you use? Well, so for important. me. So important. Yeah. So for me, what uh, has been critical to my success is I've always written my goals down. Even when I was 14, 15 years old, I would write down my goals, what I wanted to do you know, in that year. But also I had a vision board of what I want my life and wife to look like. Which he shared. <laughs> and he showed me like last year yeah. whenever he posted, I was like, no way. I mean, the yeah. girl has shorter hair than me, but I don't think you could have ever imagined you'd have a girl with hair. No. <laughs> well, your hair definitely superseded my vision board. But it was yeah. uncanny. I mean, it looked yeah. so much like me. And even the house you drew. Yeah. Yeah. So house. vision boards, vision boards, very important. You know, you can't uh, go in, in the roads of success if you don't know where you want to go. Right. So write down your vision board, whether it's, you know, buying your first home or, if it's opening your own business, going after your passion, whatever it is, whatever makes you happy, life is a journey. You gotta know where you're going. So vision board is very important. Write down your goals. Second, be positive. You know, if you're positive and you're always smiling, go out there, meet people and share your vision board, your dreams and what you're working on. And believe it or not, after a while, you'll find people that help you in your journey. You know, so it's very important. So go out there, yeah. network. So have a vision board, write your goals down, be positive, and go out there and network with people. And you know, the laws of universe uh, work in you know, funny ways. You know, they just come together. If you really work hard and you put out your best put, uh, forward, things will start happening for you. And right now, two, with, years, with but... the power of technology, it's so much easier to network. You literally yeah. don't have to leave your home. You can reach anyone from around the world just by getting online. I mean, that's yeah. so incredible. So you literally have no excuse not to. Yeah. Um, but I 100% agree that you should write your goals down, have a vision board. Honestly, I've never actually done the vision board where, even though I'm such a visual person, I don't know why I've never done that, where you cut out things from magazines and stick it on a board. Um, I think because I just didn't want anybody to see it. <laughs> like I was too shy. But I would write, I would write all my goals, all my dreams everything that I wanted to achieve. And I would break it down, you know, monthly, yearly, next five to 10 years. Um, it's what Manny said is so true, power of visualization. Like I, I always, it's crazy. Like there's certain things that I have that written that have 100% come true. And I'm like, wow, I, I, I wrote that. So, you know, I put it out there. So I 100% agree with that. Write your goals down, write what you want down because you just, it, it happens. It really happens. Put it out there. Yeah. And most importantly, take action. You know, yeah. things don't come through unless you take action. Don't be a, a lot talker. Of people, do it. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. If you post a picture of a Corvette on your bedroom wall, it's not going to happen. You got to take action and yeah. you got to see what you're going to do to make that money to buy that Corvette, right? So just okay. never give up. So have a plan and be positive, go out there, network, mm -hmm. and then also never give up, right? So never give up. Active. Yeah. Okay, this is, a, this is a funny one. Why don't you ever get your hair wet in your pool? Okay, so true story, you did. I've only been in my pool twice since we bought this house. When did we buy this house, honey? Two years ago? 2017. Okay, so it's almost three years. I've only been in the pool twice, like fully. Uh -huh. And it was a photo shoot. <laughs> because I don't like to get my hair wet because my hair, you guys, is very long, it's very thick, it's high maintenance as far as washing it. I don't wash my hair every day. I don't think, you know, that's one of my hair tips, which we'll get into later, but I don't like to wash my hair too often. So if I get in that pool, I'm gonna have to wash my hair. And this hair is not easy to manage. That means I have to have somebody come blow dry it. That takes, you know, another hour and a half of my time, plus, you know, 30 minutes in the shower, shampooing, conditioning, combing, like it's a process. Okay, so enough with your get... hair. Move on to the next question. Okay, well, I'm just saying, that's why I don't get my hair wet. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me ask another one. Um, okay, here, this is a, um, this one pertains to you, but it says, Manny and Leila, this is from Harish Khalil. How can I get involved in real estate market with no money? Is there any books you recommend? Yes. My books. <laughs> Funny you ask. 
Honey, I'm your biggest, um, I'm your promoter right here. Thank I you. I have them here. So tell them about the difference between the two books, honey. Well, yeah, the first book, Contrarian Playbook, um, it was my first book I wrote in 2011. And that's really the, you know, basics of real estate investing from A to Z. It's basically real estate investing for beginners. And second book is about real estate, but mostly about biography. I got Layla and my kids in there. So yes, it, there's some pictures of us. Yeah, she it, told me about like literally the day before they were going to print. So I had like no time to tell them, take this picture out or put this picture in. But yeah, so this, the first book's more about real estate. Second book is sharing my journey. There you are. Yeah. And at the end of the live, we're going to give you guys a chance to win not only Manny's book, but a three-month supply of hair to men, my um, hair la to men's that I take for my hair. So we're going to give away a signed copy of Manny's book and a PR kit that includes a three-month supply of hair to men to a few lucky winners. All you have to do is go on my last post, the video where I mentioned about this um, live, and just comment your favorite part of this live. Um, which part of this live did you enjoy? If you or something that you learned, and um, we'll pick a few winners. Yeah. Okay. So, should I respond to their question? How do yeah. they yeah. invest in real estate with no money? Yeah. Well, there are several ways you can start investing in real estate with absolutely no money. One is become a real estate agent and study the market and start looking for opportunities, build your network with investors and you just source deals and start making fee and now you got money. And you can buy properties and bring in an equity investor and you know share the upside. That's something a lot of uh, real estate agents do early on before they start having cash to buy their own property. The other way you can buy a property if you got a job you can actually become a real estate agent, use your 3% commission as a down payment, and you can get a 97% loan. It's FHA loan, government-backed uh, uh, residential loan that's highly leveraged. And I actually bought my first home in 1996 using FHA loan. And I used a 3% commission for my down payment. And I think I only had $1,300 back then. And I end up making $80,000 on that house a um, little over a year after I purchased it. So there is a lot of ways but I recommend everyone to get the real estate license if it's something you want to get involved as, as a long term. Um, it's a journey that you get better at it as years go by and as more deals you look at. And it's fun. It's kind of like, you know, hunting for that, you know, that deal that you can flip for a profit. And more than anything, timing's everything. So I've made all my money in recessions and I would highly re recommend be patient for that deal. You know, if you bought any property in 2006, 2007, it would have taken you 10 years to get your equity back. And, but if you bought any property in 2010 to 2012, 13, you would have very likely doubled your money if it was in a metro city. So timing is very important. And we're about to have another huge down cycle in real estate. So this is a perfect time for you to power up, get your license, learn. Maybe it's a side gig you can start. And within two, three years, when the uh, timing's right and you have tons of foreclosures, you can start your journey and buy your first property. Very nice. All right. Okay, babe. On one? This one's for both of us. How do you guys manage business and family life? Mm. Work-life balance. So we used to yep. go on vacations. We used to go to date nights, dinners. <laughs> now we can't do any of that. So if you're asking yeah. right now, I don't know. It's it's pretty tough. I mean, there is. I don't think there is any balance right now. Right now, you just have to make do with with the current situation and make the best of it. Um, but normally, um, vacationing is. You know, we love to travel. We love um, going to dinners, um, seeing our you know our friends, other couples that um, we spend time with. Um, but as far as balancing, I think you know, we try to. We don't work on weekends. We try to really dedicate when we come home to our kids yep. and the weekends to do something fun with them. What do you want to, how do you Yeah, well, for me, I love cars. I love cars and I like smoking a cigar and relax and you oh, love yeah. watching murder mysteries. <laughs> and you like watching murder mysteries. So <laughs> we give, we give, yeah, you got to give each other some space, you know. Yes. Yeah. I love to just sit in the room, close all the doors and just like watch 
so, murder mysteries, Dateline 2020, like that's my jam. That's, that's what I live for. I get so excited every Friday because there's fresh new <laughs> Datelines. <laughs> okay. How did you guys meet and where? We talked about that. We met on Facebook. Um, what else, babe? Do you ever fight? If so, how do you handle arguments? You guys are goals. Right? Oh, man. فارسی چه بدونی؟ چجوری دعوا میکنیم؟ آف کورس دعوا میکنیم oh, yeah. بزن بزن اینجا آره با <laughs> هر روز کن I'm just kidding <laughs> دعوا میکنیم همه هر رابطه هر شوهر و زن دعوا دارن و مخالفت دارن متو at the end of the day باید همدیگر رو دوست داشته باشین و ریسپکت به همدیگر بدین و بدون اینکه که خب هر روز پرفکت نیست یه روز خب اصابتون خوره یه روز اصلا از خواب بیدار میشین یه نو مودتون خوب نیست یا هر چی باید با هم دیگه صحبت کنیم و اگه تو اون روز نمیتونیم با هم دیگه صحبت بکنیم بریم بخوابی روز بعد با هم دیگه صحبت کنیم یا برو پیاده روی برو پیاده روی برو پیاده روی یا کول آف سو اینی ویز یو وانا سی دات این انگلیش نو ای دید ای 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 Okay, I can't read any comments. I Hopefully, know. Oh, I'm still somebody on. asked, when are foreclosures coming, honey? When oh. are foreclosures coming? So foreclosures on single-family homes is going to be a while because Fannie Mae Freddie Mac, which owns 90% of the loans, they're backed by government. They have a mandate by feds that they're not supposed to foreclose on a home for 12 months. So they're going to give you guys or homeowners, you know, basically a year to deal with this COVID-19 financial crisis. So it's going to be a while for single family homes up to $700,000, $800,000 value. But for custom homes and commercial property and especially retail centers, which are hit the hardest, um, you can expect to see some distressed property in those asset classes in the next, you know, eight months to 12 months. But majority of the bulk of the reo i think is going to be coming down 18 months to 24 months from now so you got to be patient don't jump the gun i've made my, that mistake before in october 2008 where i bought 24 single family homes in literally two months and then the prices keep going further lower and lower but then didn't really bottom out till you know late 2009 so be patient especially if you only have you know one bullet in your chamber and you only have ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars you can't throw into one property be patient and wait for a better opportunity mm -hmm. um okay somebody asked what are some businesses that are thriving in these times um or that you should get into because of these times so i have a few and then you can give yours um i think definitely obviously any meal delivery and grocery stores you know mm -hmm. that's that's always going to be very strong because we're always going to need yeah. food um, and we're all home so we're going to be rely on restaurants to deliver to us now um, i think the other big thing is cleaning services professional cleaning services when we come out of this everyone's mm -hmm. going to want to you know professionally sanitize their offices restaurants you know buildings what, what have you homes and i think um you know cleaning services are going to be big I think health and wellness mm -hmm. is going to continue to be big. It's always been important, but I think even more so now as we try to take better yeah. care of our bodies and boost our immune system. And pretty much any e-commerce business is, is going to thrive and, and do well as long as you're able to manage your supply yeah. chain and, and can still deliver. Yeah. Well, you said everything I was going to say. The only thing I would add, online dating apps. No, I'm just <laughs> Really? But how? They can't. Well, no, like we are right now, you know, video conferencing. Like, yeah, but uh, eventually um, you want to meet the person, no? Yeah, you could, but what I'm saying, most people are going to be more, oh, you know, yeah. used to the tele, you know, video conferencing and, um, yeah. you know, not so much socializing at clubs and bars. Mm -hmm. I, I think, think that, online education, yeah. more people are going to yeah. homeschool after this. I mean, it's, it's, I, I can see it. Um, yeah, but I'm more excited about taking properties like retail shopping centers, big box retailers that are going to be obsolete, taking those and repurposing them, maybe put, uh, you know, storage units in there, maybe make it senior, you know, uh, senior living, taking real estate that's prime in a great area of, you know, metro cities and repurposing them. I think that's going to happen a lot, you know. Yeah. All right. 535. Okay. You want to go cook, uh, you know, make me a sandwich? Make him up, Arnie. 
Okay. Oh, you don't have any more questions? I thought you had more. No. Well, I do have, but you know, I've already responded to a lot of them in general. Yeah. Um, so. Do we teach our kids Farsi? You know, we try. Um, Farsi, mano, but man, man, we speak Farsi. Mota va bache ham is that sakh tar be hum bring ki ho. You know, ona nemi khan ya bazurish po konam ya bribeish. I have to bribe her. But we try. Sign me koni. Mota persela bishtar po posh. So va sign me konam mota enzo kamtar. But we speak Farsi to each other when we want to talk about the kids. So that's that's good. Yeah, English. <laughs> Persian okay. English. Um, okay, beauty tips. So a lot of people have been asking me for some beauty tips, and you know, I I'm doing a live um, next week with someone really exciting. So I don't want to give it away, but I'm gonna do more beauty stuff on that. But I just want to give you guys a couple of beauty tips that is commonly asked of me. Number one is how often do I how do I take care of my hair? Number one, um, I think I touched on this. Don't wash your hair every day unless you have really super oily hair. I wash my hair once or twice a week, and in between, I use just a lot of great dry shampoos and different oils. And I always use my Miracle Brush. I'm sure you know if, you, if you've been following my Instagram, you know that I created the Miracle Brush because you know I have very sensitive scalp, and I also have a lot of hair. And this is the most gentle detangling brush that I use. It's perfect for long hair, thick hair, fine hair, children's hair especially. Um, so just being really gentle with your hair. Getting regular trims. I cut my hair every three months. Although now, who knows how long it's going to be. And then I eat a really well balanced diet. I eat a lot of eggs. Eggs are the most. They're superfood. They have so much nutrition. They have a small amount of every vitamin and mineral that a human body needs. Um, yeah. It's that, it's that incredible. So I eat a lot of eggs. I eat two eggs. She's not joking. She gets up two in the morning sometimes, and she's down there making an omelet. If I'm hungry, like in the middle of that, like I crave eggs. I wake up in the morning and I crave eggs. So that's that. Um, and then I eat a lot of avocados. I think it helps make your hair just shiny and healthy. Um, and then the other thing, one more beauty beauty trick that I want to share with you guys is if you ever want to curl your lashes with a curler, um, I use my blow dryer that? on it. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm saying, how do you do that? Yeah, no, no, no. So to curl your lashes, one trick I have is I use my blow dryer on the curl, on um, the lash curler, and it just gives you a way more defined. Oh, let me take notes. Then. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need to. You have long lashes already, babe. So, so she wanted to get in real lash curler. So if you want to do it, you can do it. But yes, I did not show. I'm going to put my nails in there. But test for your nails too. That was just no curl, curl of a curler. Fair point. Okay, um, honey, how about that uh, spaghetti? Come on. I know, I know. Honestly, there's so many questions, but I only printed a few because I didn't want this to go too long. It's actually been 40 minutes. Oh my God, yeah. babe, it's been 40 minutes. Wow. Okay. okay, guys, should we end it or should we continue? I mean, most people are going to watch this, you know, 20 minutes. Yeah, I can't, see, I can't see any more comments uh, scrolling. I, I okay. see it on yours. I see it on yours. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it on yours, but how many has no clue? <laughs> um, no okay. what? Well, let me get to some other questions then. Um, what kind of mentality do you think help manifest your abundance? Are you asking me? Yeah. Mentality, fighters' mentality. Um, you know, working out for me is ninety-nine percent of you know building my mindset. So I work out, of course, is you know, you build muscle, but um, as you know, I work out four days a week. And I think that really helps me focus and keep my mental clarity. Are you staring at me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to read the comments. Oh. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you for the nice yeah. comments. I'm trying to respond, but I can't. Love you, Tina. Thank you, honey. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, working out, I forgot what was your question because you keep how do you, um, what type of mentality do you think help manifest your abundance? Oh, I see. Yeah, working out, um, you know, being grateful, gratitude is very important, and just being positive, and, you know, giving back, you know, as you, you know, I'm involved with many charities, you know, but that always kind of keeps me grounded, mm -hmm. and, you know, just making mini goals and achieving mini goals, and as you achieve more and more of your goals, that you just build more confidence 
-hmm. and it gets easier you know i've been doing this for 28 years in real estate and um but exercise give back be positive and have a good wife honey what's your skincare routine somebody's asking what nothing nothing it's, it's a bar of soap that he uses from head to toe nothing. <laughs> this guy and his skin, his skin is perfect. Really? And his lashes are long. He doesn't have to do nothing. Thank you. That's a That's nice question. That's why my kids have long lashes. Thank God. Okay, let me answer that question. What, what type of mentality helped manifest my abundance? Thank you for saying that. I think from, from a very young age, I, I always had a lot of goals, and I always I wanted more than what we had. Um, I had dreams. And I knew that, you know, if I wanted those things, I had to do it myself. I had to work for it. And so I think for me, the mentality was that of, you know, I deserve it. I don't know what you call that. You know, just having that confidence and knowing that I deserve the life that I'm dreaming about. Um, so when you operate from that, um, you know, that type of mentality, then you, you become a go-getter. You, you, you make things happen. You make shit happen. That's and, right, baby. You know, just you have that confidence that yeah. makes you want to achieve your goals. Okay. Oh, this is a very common question. They, you guys always ask me, how come you can't get my products in, you know, certain countries, especially in Iran? And the reason is to Iran, Iran and U.S., because of sanctions, you can't purchase U.S. Um, products. And that includes, you know, Little Lani here and Herdeman. Um, so unfortunately, but because there's sanctions, sanction in London for us to change the honey. They know sanctions, come on. Okay, honey sanction. Um, but you never know. Politics, but inshallah, my dream is that I can be a product from Iran. So, unfortunately, I need um, to hear something to Iran, um, my other brand. Okay. Spaghetti? Or sandwich. I'm hungry. Honey, you had way more questions. You didn't print it. I had like five pages. Did you print that, Kathy? Well, I wrote a few, but you like to talk more, so go ahead. You guys, do I talk more than Manny? Do I interrupt him? Yes, you do. He told me not to interrupt him before this. So, all right, guys. Okay, we're going to answer a few more questions here, but, um, you know, for the most part, I think, um, <laughs> what's for dinner? Hichi. <laughs> no, your spaghetti is very good. Malkarni, my Persian spaghetti, has actually been a hit. And, you know, if you have followed my Instagram stories, you know that I make this mean drink. It's called the Quarantini. Actually, Quarantina. And it's with um, tequila. It's very good. And what do you call that version for men? Quarantino? Quarantino! I like that! <laughs> there you go. I like that, babe. <laughs> All right. Let's go make me some Quarantino and some spaghetti. How about that? Okay. All right, guys. Um, thank you for joining our live. If you loved what you saw, please go back to my post and um, comment and let me know which part of this live that you found helpful and beneficial. And you will be entered into our giveaway of a three-month supply of Herdeman and a signed copy of Manny's book. Yeah, and if you guys want to learn more about real estate, check out my link on my profile on Instagram for my mentorship program. Babe, they're asking, wait, 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 this was a question. I totally forgot about it. Do we have any tips, quarantine tips for couples and families of things to do? To do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, puzzles. <laughs> puzzles are a good one. Watching well, movies. Yeah, rewrite your vision board. Write down everything yeah. you're going to do in the next five years. You know, that by itself is a huge task. Mm -hmm. um, and go for walks. A lot of people don't walk and talk. This is a perfect time to go take a walk and talk about life, everything you guys want to do. So basically, just recycle your vision board mm -hmm. and update it. And be prepared for the downturn because we are in a great recession. And just get your finances in order things that you guys can immediately do to kind of do damage control. We all have those. I have them. I've been working on those. So just get your finances in order, vision board, take some time off to kind of 
relaxes your mind and tensions because there's a lot of anxiety right now with everybody. So. Great. What's your favorite car in your collection? People are asking. Oh, the newest one, the Bugatti Chiron Hermes edition. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Thank all you. All right. For how about that spaghetti? Huh? Thank you. We Can love you see? guys. Thank you for all your oh. support and love. Sorry. Go ahead, Leila. Oh, somebody's asking. Why weren't we sitting next to each other? So, but yeah. Why didn't we sit to each other? Yeah, but we're together in the same house. <laughs> yeah, the best part is, honey, you're just right there. I can open those door and come and kiss you. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Mwah. All right. Thank you for Bye. Love you guys. See you another time. Bye. Mwah. Bye. Bye.